different cultures, different languages, different people, different backgrounds, in unity, brings us together under the banner of Jesus Christ. So we're going to sing this morning an old song together in different languages. So join in as you can. Very simple today. I just uh, had a little taste of heaven right there. <laughs> I was listening to that. I was thinking about uh, what God hears. <laughs> um, he hears praises from all over the world. Yeah. Can you imagine that? All sorts of languages. All sorts of locations. All sorts of structures and lack of them. From highest cathedrals that are magnificent to jungles and gale cells. He hears all these things at once. And we are just a small part of what our great and glorious God has done. And so when we sing our praises in this place, it's being joined together in heaven from praises in Africa, in India, in Myanmar, Russia, Liberia, France, Bolivia, Brazil, all around the world. And it is a beautiful song of praise to God. And we have that to look forward to as we read in Scripture. Right? 
what around that throne on that day will be like. All tribes and peoples and languages and cultures. And we get a touch of that. So thank God for his beautiful, wonderful, expansive, to us and he deserves our praise amen amen thank you so much thank you ladies for leading us that was beautiful very very beautiful okay we're going to dismiss the kids at this time so kids you are free to roam about the country not true please go to where you're supposed to go (laughs) so glad that you are here so glad that there are children among us Uh, It is a joy and a privilege to have them here. Grateful that you as parents and grandparents entrust us to join with you in what you're doing in raising your kids in the Lord. And so thank you for that. And if you think of parents, pray for parents. Parents have a hard job. (laughs) And uh, pray for them. You know, if you pray for our church, which I sure hope you do, remember, uh, remember the parents and their role among us and what they do, because it is a wonderful and sometimes very, very difficult job. This morning, we are returning back to our series called Life Together, and we are now in the book of, well, we're continuing in the book of Ephesians. We are in chapter four. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up, and we are taking it slowly through these verses of this marvelous book. As you know, we as humanity do a very good job of being divided, right? We love to stake our ground and tell others why we're better than them. Being (laughs) divided comes naturally. What else comes naturally? Being united in the wrong things as humans sometimes comes naturally. But I want to tell you that in the church, unity comes super naturally. We are a, um, a, uh, a vast and diverse people. But Christians have more in common in the Trinity that we have that is not in common. So if you are discouraged about all of the divisions in our world, I want you today to scripture, let these words penetrate your heart that we have more in common together than what separates us. We have these things in the Trinity. What binds us together is greater than what pulls us apart. We are going to see that today through God's Word. Knowing this will give you encouragement in our divided world so that through God we would have hope hope, and then gauge strength to continuing to continue to follow Christ. Now, for review, if you remember that the church was Christ's idea. The church is built on Jesus. The church is built by Jesus. And the church is built for Jesus. Jesus. He's done so to display the grace of God. In the church, the grace of God is displayed. We've seen this in Ephesians chapter 1. He's done this to display the wisdom of God, binding together people from all ages, all places, different languages as one. We, the church, display the glory of God. That is 
his purpose and what he is building even now, even in this place. Display the grace of God. Display the wisdom of God. Display the glory of God. This is seen by his spirit working among us. And as we talked about last week, we have a part in this. We have a responsibility where the, 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 the calling that we've received has weight to it. And as Paul turned the corner now in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, now walk, balance out the scale in a manner worthy of this calling. So it is done by God, for God, and to God. And we are being built together into his house. And we have the glory of participating in what he's doing. And we have responsibility now to receive this grace and to walk in this grace. We do so by walking in wisdom. We do so by living in humility and being gentle with one another. Having patience and bearing one another with one another. It's called long-suffering. That we, God's people, would be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of of peace. These words have helped me even this last week, where I had a conversation with another believer that I was ready to take down. Took out my theological tool belt and I was ready to go to work. Then the words reminded me, the Holy Spirit, David, the eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I reholstered my gospel guns and smiled and found things that we had common ground in. These words help us to be connected and to be together in the bond of peace. God helps us to be a people, to live this way. And if we do so, this, this will be a place that fulfills God's purpose and desire. This will be a place where both his people and his presence dwell. This will be a place of healing for your heart and for our divided community. It will be a safe place. Place, a strong place, a powerful place, a life-changing, culture-impacting, world-expanding, eternally rewarding place, a place where you want and delight to be. It is no fun having to go to church. a lot of fun getting to go to church. There's a difference. And a place in which God's Spirit is alive and active. A place in which you are known and loved. Where God works in you and through you and sometimes in spite of you. Right? To display his grace and his glory and his goodness here and then. A place in which there is joy found and peace expressed and healing happening 
in our hearts, in our bodies, in our minds that extends to those where there is brokenness and disunity and disharmony. That displays God's spirit among us. So let us be these type of people. God, do this among us. This is what I pray for. This is what we work towards, that God, that you would work among us and that this would be a delight and you would give us strength to be patient. You'll give us enough elasticity in our relationships that we can be long-suffering. That you would do a work in us and form us into the image of your Son and help us to connect with the world throughout the world. Bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations. This is what God delights to do. And our connectiveness, as we're going to see in our passage today, is not based in our goodness, it's based in His. That helps me, because if the church was to be unified because of my goodness, there is no hope. Thank you. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's all good. There is no hope. But guess where the hope is? It's in God. It's in God. It's in God. And that's where the Holy Spirit, through the pen of Paul, brings us to this morning. To the means and the source of our connectiveness. To an eternal supply that is everlasting and is right and is true and is perfect. A source that will never be exhausted or extinguished or exterminated. God himself. So this morning in this passage we're looking at just a few verses. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4. As Paul talks about what we have in Christ, as Paul leads us to our high calling and then tells us how to work and walk, he says, now let me tell you what we have in common. And you'll see that each one of these are bound up in a person of the Trinity. What we have in the Spirit, what we have in Christ the Lord, what we have in God the Father. This is what we share in this room. This is what we share as various scattered churches throughout the world. One God, one Spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one hope, one faith, one body. Only Christians have these things in common, and the bond is eternal. Focus on these things. Live in these things. Thank God for these things. Unite in the Spirit. We unite in the Spirit. Verse 4, Ephesians 4. There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. We are united in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit regenerates us and joins us as the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the deposit in all of us that guarantees our inheritance and secures our hope. There is just 
one body. There are not multiple bodies of Christ. There's one body in different locations. Each local congregation is part of the greater body of Christ. We have many different names on each of our doors, but we have the same spirit that binds us into the body. We are not competing against other churches. You want to just settle in for the soil of your soul. <laughs> we in Rockford, what I begrudgingly call, we have a thing called the steeplechase. Go to this church. I don't like that church. Why? Because the pastor's balding. Something happens, so we go from this staple, then we go over to this one. Like it for a while, something doesn't set right. <laughs> we go over this one. Have you ever noticed, and I've noticed this as a pastor, <laughs> in this community, because I've been here like a couple of decades now. Wow, I shouldn't have put this in my mouth. I'm sorry. That's disgusting. Okay. <clears throat> In our community, um, I've noticed if one church grows, it's a revival. No, it's called transfer growth. One church grows in our community. Hey, what's the new great churches? A lot of churches in the area go down. And then all of a sudden this church goes up and those churches go down. <laughs> it's like our evangelism is fishing in other people's live wells. Understand what I'm saying here? Versus connecting with a community who's just swimming around. You guys understand that? So here's the good news. We're not in... We're not in um, competition with other churches. I get together with other pastors. We like each other. We pray for each other. We communicate, hey, how are you doing? How are you dealing with this? This is good for us. So try to bless churches that you know are preaching the gospel. Bless them and the things that we have together. We are one body. It's a testimony to the church when we do things together. We can say amen. It's a testimony that we have a merge and we can say amen, right? It's a testimony to the community that says, here are churches working together. Those things display God's glory. So we intentionally connect because there is one body of Christ. And by the way, if I cut off my finger, is that a problem? Um, for me, yes, thank you. Who loses in that scenario? I lose because I don't have that finger any longer. This finger loses because it doesn't have blood, okay, because it's not connected to my heart, and it will die, and I will lose. Same is true with the disconnected body of Christ. Are you hearing me? Just in prayer today, I heard a prayer talking about how many Christians are in our community that are not connected to a church. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you're here. Right? It should be a little alarming to you and to me, and it's, it is to me. Why is this so? And you can rifle through your Rolodex in your mind. Some of you probably don't even know what a Rolodex is, okay? Your address book. <laughs> Contact list. Whatever. Of people you know, why is this? 
Let us be a people who pray for our community, pray for those who are disconnected from the body, because if they're disconnected with the body, there'll be atrophy, and after atrophy, there'll be death. What a joy it is to be connected to one body through the Spirit. We are united in the one Spirit. You know that the same Holy Spirit that worked in creation, the same Holy Spirit that is active in the Old Testament, the same Holy Spirit that fell on the disciples, (laughs) is the same Holy Spirit that has been given to you. Let that sink in. There is not a different Holy Spirit for those in the Old Testament, those in the upper room, those in Israel. Same Holy Spirit. That should give you pause and that should make you be in awe. Because the God of wonders continues to wonderfully work in us and on us and through us. That should help you to understand we are connected by being a part of the body of Christ to the Holy Spirit who is on and in all of us. We're connected by a supernatural, empowering God. That is what binds us together. We are united in one hope. After you die, the only hope you have to live again is Christ. All of the people in all of the graves have the same hope. This is the hope that we have been given, the hope of the resurrection based in the promises of the faithful and true one, and therefore we wait together in all places, in all times, in the world. This summer, we did a a number of uh, funerals. And we were out at the cemetery with, um, for the burial of a good friend, Lois Dixon. And I was talking to the funeral director, and he told me something I hadn't known, and I should have known this, I've done a lot of funerals. He says, when we bury bodies, we always face them towards the east. Because it is symbolic of these people looking for when the new day dawns. And they are to rise again. It was profound to me, this this symbolic gesture of saying, I'm waiting to when the sun Dawns, the Son of God comes again, ushering me into new life. We are buried and have one hope. Every person in this room, every person in every church is in one body by the Spirit, giving the same Spirit on and in and through everyone And we share one hope. We have these things in common. We are united by the Spirit. And no, I'm not going to do a magic trick. But we're going to unveil this thing. God builds his church. And he puts us together. And he gives us the gift of one another. 
and he sets us in families. We are bound together by his spirit. Verse 5 tells us of how we are united as well. We unite in the Son. So we are united by the Spirit and also united by the Son. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. This one Lord is Christ. We are united in Him and through Him and by Him and for Him. He is both our Savior, He is our Redeemer, and He is Lord. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we are subject to Him and we are citizens of His family and benefactors of Him. We serve and are surrounded by the same Lord. And the word Lord is intentional could have said our savior yes he is our savior assuredly and salvation happens justification happens at the moment we believe and now we claim him and serve him as lord as we serve in the church we're serving the same person jesus christ who is lord oh They're serving him in India. They're serving him in Africa. They're serving him in a church three blocks away from here. Same Lord. We are working together under our great Christ. One Lord. There is one faith. And to believe the gospel is to enter into the unity it creates. Christianity is a shared faith. No separate or merely individual faith exists. We don't have separate gods and believing separate things. Now, we may differ on some of the non-essential gospel, non-essential truths. They would say, how did this happen? How did that happen? And, you know, when is the millennium coming? And all of this type of stuff. There's things that we can explore. To be a Christian is to understand some basic concepts. I was blind, but now I see. I was dead, and now I'm alive. By grace, I've been saved through faith. Belief in what Christ has done that God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. And theologians and people throughout the The centuries have put together things like creeds and confessions that serve to bind us together. And we'll say a familiar one at the very end. There is one faith. Catch this. You are bound together by one Lord with one baptism. Regardless of where you've been baptized or who baptized you or if you were sprinkled or dunked or whatever same baptism if you were baptized here you've overcome a lot of fears fear of heart heights to be baptized here fear of water fear of public speaking fear of being electrocuted just kidding you won't be electrocuted If you're baptized in a church, if you're baptized in a river, if you're baptized in a a tub, if you're baptized in a jungle, if you're baptized in a cathedral, if you're baptized with a hole in the ice, if you're baptized by a pastor, your uncle, your grandmother, same baptism into Christ, buried with him 
raised with him. Baptism binds us together. Faith binds us together. Our Lord binds us together. His Spirit binds us together. Our hope binds us together. Our, the body of Christ binds us together. You have more in common with other Christians than you have not in common. I have more in common with an eight-year-old African girl than I do even a middle-aged white American. If this person is a Christian, then this person is not. We share one faith. We share one baptism. We share one God and Father of all. We unite in the Son. So unite in Him. The Son is a powerful, working power that unites us. Jesus builds our, his church. Does this look familiar to you, by the way? He puts us together in his son. And each one of us have a place in it. Thirdly, we see this, we, we unite in the Father. Verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. There is one God and Father of all. And there's so many things that are called God and worshipped in our world. I've seen them in the streets of India. I've seen them in temples in Mongolia. Seen them in various places. Some are shiny. Some have been burned incense to. Some have been exalted. But there is only one true God. He is the God that is revealed in his word, the Bible, and seen through the Son. There's one God, and he is the Father of all, the creator, the source, the one we are found in and connected through. One of his favorite titles in Scripture is Father, and that language is on purpose. Invites us into his family. And if he is our father, that means we are siblings. Right? Regardless of how your face looks, regardless of what color your skin is, regardless of what language you speak, regardless if you have tattoos or no tattoos, earrings or no rings, nose rings, or... Nothing. We are family, so we embrace the other, and we can say amen to that. God, help us to do that. Young, embracing old. Seated, embracing those who can stand. Tattoos with non-tattoos, long hairs, no hairs. Educated, not sophisticated, not embrace. That's what the world needs to see. There is one God, and through Him we have eternity because He is eternal. He was over all. And through all, and he's in all. What binds us together is greater than what separates us. We have a supernatural connection based in not our goodness, but in God's glory. 
I want you to remember that. Remember it. God being above all. God being in all. God working through all. He builds us as living stones into his house. One more passage, and we're going to turn to communion. Ephesians 2, 18. Again, in this book of Ephesians, we see these things coming together. These are based in the Trinity. This is what holds us together. Verse 18 of Ephesians chapter 2, through Christ, through Christ, we have access to one spirit. There's a spirit to the Father, the Trinity. 19, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens. We're no longer distant from one another, but we've been brought close to the Trinity himself. But you are fellow citizens with the saints. You are members of the household of God, which is built on the foundation of the Apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. God binds us together. He connects us together. And this is a wonderful illustration, and thank you for your participation in it. It's a reminder that each one of us matters, each one of us belongs, and together he is, we are a habitation for God's Spirit, And we exist to point to the cross, which reminds me of a church name, Cross Point. (laughs) This is what God does through us beyond the building. If this building was destroyed, we would still be the church. I'm grateful for this structure, but this isn't the church. You are. Those are the bonds that matter. Grateful for this place, grateful for the beauty, but if it is destroyed, the church goes on. So as you think about God's work in the world, as you think about his part, know that you're not alone. In the church you have community. Through the Son, you have identity and you have purpose. Remember this. In the Trinity, you also have eternity. God gives us community. God gives us identity. God gives us eternity. He gives it in himself. And what he gives, he will not Take away. So if you notice today, all the songs are focused on this message of unity and what we have. Be encouraged about what God is doing. Ask him to display his grace in us. Ask us to continue, God to continue to bind us together and envelop and involve the greater community and the rest of the world. That's why we have missionaries. That's why we go. That's why we send shoe boxes. That's why we support people intentionally. So in conclusion, we're going to do two things together. Number one, we're going to say a creed. It's called the Apostles' Creed. We said it one time before. A way of expressing our faith together. So it's going to be on the screens, and we're going to say it together. After that, Pastor Key is going to lead us. And communion, another way in which we are united together. So let's 
say this creed together. Here we go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Pastor Key, would you please come and lead us in communion? Good morning, everybody. This morning, I am so glad to lead communion and before God and you. So, uh, 